Well, listening to Cabin Radio's lunchtime news. Now, if you've ever had a baby in your life, and already that rules out a few people, uh, you probably go to the hospital and you might get a bunch of information on how to look after your baby. Uh, how much information do you get about how to look after you? Well, in Emerson, Graham is a personal trainer and runs a bunch of classes at the Yellow Life Racket Club. And she's in the studio now. And she's brought props, by the way, which we're going to get into in a second, to actually talk about how you look after yourself after giving birth. Because in Emerson, first of all, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Hi, thanks for having me, Ali. It's good uh, to be here. You've given birth three times in I your have, life? I have, yes. Okay, and your second in particular. Now, give people a bit of background here because... You've had a lot of this happen to you, which has informed now how you're trying to help other people. What happened to you? Okay, so after my first baby, everything just kind of went back to normal. I experienced that fun bounce back. After my second child, things didn't go back to normal. And it was then that I kind of thought, oh, what's happening to my body? I had constant lower back pain. I would sneeze, I would pee a little when I laughed or ran or coughed. And um, I noticed that my belly just stayed distended. And so when I started Googling it, trying to find Dr. Google answers, I came across a word called diastasis recti, which I never heard of. And at the time, there wasn't a lot of information out there about it. And um, one of the main things people were saying is that you need surgery. That's the only way you can fix your body. And so um, I started just kind of looking if I had any other options other than surgery. And that brought me into the world of fitness. Okay. So you got into this world of fitness. Now, first of all, let's just continue your story a little bit. How did you how did you go about working with that condition yourself? Because I imagine it's probably, if you've never heard of it before, and then you suddenly realize, oh, okay, this is me. How do you get your head around that? And what did you do to approach that? It was startling at first, but I think even now, it's something that's whipped me when seem feel so shocked about. And a diastasis recti, it just refers to that your abdominal muscles, your six pack moving apart. And it's something that actually happens to 100% of full term pregnancies. It's a way that your body for your stomach to expand so that you can grow a child. So after you have that child, a lot of women think, oh, everything will just kind of snap back. And it's Unex- and you don't realize that your body's changed over nine months, it's still going to be changed. And so that's when you might realize that, oh, my abs have been pushed apart. I have no tension down my midline. And not you don't feel supported in the way that you were before your baby because your anatomy has changed how it was. Now, I'm conscious that you do have a model of the female anatomy just parked here. Now, feel free to bring that in and I will do my level best for you, the listener, to describe what is happening at any moment. Now, before you you resort to the model that we have in front of us here, I wanted to ask, you obviously then, I know you, you're obviously a personal trainer. I, I happen to follow you on Instagram. I know that you, you work really hard in the gym and you've for a long time done a lot to try to educate people about you know, how you recover from pregnancy and postpartum in terms of making your body like the way you, you want it to be again. But you've discovered through doing that that maybe some of the approaches to fitness, the approaches to like being healthy, being in a gym, are not necessarily designed for people trying to get their body back from pregnancy, right? Yeah, it's what a lot of people think postpartum. They think, oh, I've just had a baby. I have a six-week-old. I have a three-year-old. But te- while pregnancy is temporary, postpartum is forever. If you've had a baby at any point in your life, you're a postpartum for the rest of your life. And pregnancy changes the way that your body is. A woman goes through more changes in nine months of pregnancy than a man will experience his entire life. Like your anatomy changes and the fitness industry doesn't, a lot of the information we've been getting doesn't account for that. What people don't realize is the fitness industry as it is today at modern day gyms, they grew out of the popularization of bodybuilding and Olympic lifting in the 1960s and 70s. And these were male dominated sports. So the research was done on men. And a lot of the research that's done on athletes is done on college age men, 19 to 25 years old. It's not done on women. So this information was used to train men and to build up people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then when women started wanting to do strength training, it was just like passed on to them. And maybe the amount of time was reduced or the reps were reduced or things were altered a little bit, not accounting for the fact that anatomically, women are not little men. Women are completely different. And a postpartum woman has gone through so much changes that that has to be taken into consideration when she's in the gym. How do you take that into consideration then? What kinds of exercise, what kinds of thing can you do that do a better job of that than traditionally has been the case? I think uh, women often are kind of 
feel like pain should be normal or discomfort is normal. And even just the understanding that you don't have to live in pain or discomfort in your body. Like you'll go to a gym and it's common for women to say, oh yeah, sometimes I pee a little bit when I skip, but you know, that's normal. I've had a few kids, that's just what happens. And while this is something that's very common, it's not something that has to be your norm. It's something that you can actually change. And people don't think about... The gym is very aesthetic based. So we always focus on what you can see. And when we're talking about your core, you can see your six pack, your rectus abdominal. That's the only muscle you really see. And it's a very superficial muscle. You have so many layers beneath that that affect the way that your body works. And then one of them is your pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor is the base of your core. And it's a muscle that you cannot see at all on the outside. So people don't think to train it. But it's like, it's the foundation of your core. It's trying to build a house and not accounting for the foundation, not paying any attention to foundation because you can't see it. But the foundation is what makes that house stable at the end of the day. And it matters. Okay. When you talk about this to people, do you find that there's increasing knowledge about this and that people understand more? Or are you finding that actually this is news to a lot of the women that you work with? It's news to a lot of the women. I think it's some women that will have had a C-section will often think, I didn't have a delivery. My pelvic floor wasn't affected. I didn't have a vaginal delivery. But a baby, regardless of how you delivered, a baby sat on your pelvic floor for nine months. Um, you had hormones telling those muscles to relax and stretch. And a woman's body... During pregnancy, your body is preparing your hips to expand and move apart so you can deliver a baby. And regardless of how that baby gets out, your body is still trying to do the same thing. So your hip stability and your pelvic floor changes and adapts. There could be people listening to this who are thinking, well, all right, hang on a minute, I'm pregnant, or maybe I've just given birth. I'm listening to this, and I didn't know about any of this. And maybe a seven-minute radio interview is not going to provide me absolutely everything I need to figure this out. What should people do? Um, first, it's kind of hard. In Yellow Knife, the first thing you should do, every postpartum woman should ideally do is see a pelvic floor physiotherapist. But up in Yellow Knife, there's only one pelvic floor physiotherapist and she can be booked for months in advance. So you might not be able to see her right away. But just kind of understanding uh, things like lower back pain, it doesn't have to be your norm. Um, incontinence, even peeing just a little bit doesn't have to be your norm. And pelvic floor muscle training is the number one proven intervention to stop incontinence. It works over 90% of the time. It's more successful than surgery. And a lot of people think, oh, I've been peeing a lot and I need surgery. The surgery rates are around 40%. Pelvic floor muscle training is 90%. If you can't get in to see a pelvic floor physiotherapist, you can. there's ways you can do it yourself. And that's another conversation because people talk about Kegels and then your doctor might say, go and do a Kegel. But there's a wide understanding of what a Kegel is and the average woman doesn't actually understand what it is. And it's a way to train your pelvic floor. But if you don't understand how to do it, it's not going to help you. And that's the reason I brought in my female pelvis. Okay, so, so Inevisit is now holding up a pelvis. Right, talk me through this. I'll do my level best to translate for you, the listener. So when people, often the often understanding of a Kegel is um, hold your hold like you're trying to stop a flow of urine. Doctors have often have told women to go to the toilet and pee a little bit and then hold it, and that's a Kegel. There's a couple of issues I would have with that is first... Pee is supposed to come out. You're not. It's not supposed to stay in your urinary tract. And holding pee in can all lead to a u- urinary tract infection. So stopping your pee midstream is not ideal to train your pelvic floor. But so if I show Ollie, a woman <laughs> descriptively has three openings in her pelvic floor, which is how one of the reasons that anatomically women are more susceptible to pelvic floor issues. Okay, if you're a woman listening to this, I don't think you're going to need me to illustrate which three she's talking about. I can see them. There they are. Uh, yeah, uh, in Canada, um, about 3.5% of men over 40 report leaking on occasion. It's 33% of women over 40 report it. That's around one in five women report just leaking during normal everyday activities. And the reason is a female, female pelvis is thought to be less st- stable because a male has two openings. And those two openings have what's known as a sphincter. So it has muscles around it that allow it to open and close. Women have three openings. Two of them have a sphincter. One of them, where the baby comes out, does not have a sphincter. So this is an additional hole that creates a source of instability. And it also creates a place where the pelvic organs can descend into, a condition known as prolapse, where your pelvic organs move into the the vaginal canal that has no muscle to close it. 
a Kegel helps this. So yes, back to that peeing. If you're pulling at the front, I'll show Ollie, you're only hitting right at the front. And you might be contracting that part of your pelvic floor, but the pelvic floor is a hammock that holds all your pelvic organs and it covers all the three openings. So training it, you have them to be able to lift and close all three openings or have that sensation and also to relax. It's the strangest thing as a man to sit here and try to imagine, like, lift and close all three openings. Oh, Even the two of them are like, oh, yeah, yeah, all right, I can get to two. Yeah. That's funny because pelvic floor training is actually, it's effective for men too. Men yeah. do experience incontinence, just not on a, a scale as women, just because men, one, they don't have babies, which creates a source of instability and they don't have that additional hole. But a man, you would imagine a man in two terms, oh, you can edit this out, <laughs> is... I'm not editing a word of this <laughs> For a man of pelvic floor muscle training, you would try, imagine that you're trying to shorten your penis and grow your penis. Another one is to try and draw in your testicles and then release your testicles. So that's that contraction and relaxation. For a woman, we would think about all three. The easiest one for a woman is, because most people have an experience with a tampon, is to imagine drawing up a tampon and then releasing it. What's helpful um, for men is, especially if you think about the testicles, you don't want to burst them. So Absolutely. a lot of people, they're very aggressive in their Kegels, and a Kegel is not an aggressive movement, it's a gentle lifting. So if you have testicles, it would be gently lifting them up without crushing them with force. For women, that's sometimes harder to visualize, so um, sometimes it helps to visualize it with sound. And a tip is... Pelvic, understanding what the gym is great for is the gym connects your whole body because your body is not a series of parts and your pelvic floor actually reacts to your voice. So if you do a high pitch sound and a low pitch sound and first do a really low hum and then a really high hum back and forth, you'll feel and pay attention to your pelvic, pelvic floor, you'll feel movement. And it's a gentle lifting and a gentle relaxing. So if you do the sound and tap into that sensation and then do a Kegel, I like to start with the breath because your pelvic floor reacts to your breath too. Exhale and lift it with that gentle sensation of the high pitch sound. Inhale and relax it with the gentle descent of the low pitch sound. I have honestly never sat in the studio before and listened to somebody speak while trying delicately to train my pelvic floor. <laughs> it is a fascinating experience. Now, genuinely, though, you've given me a lot to think about that because I just haven't thought about this. And I wondered whether you encounter people as a personal trainer who just like, have not given this the first thought until you explain that this is a thing that they should be working on. Yeah, most people haven't. Most people don't think about it at all. And most people are so focused on their core, 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 and they don't think about their pelvic floor. And besides the pelvic floor being the foundation of your core, the pelvic floor actually co-contracts with your abdominals. And a lot of women um, complain about that, not feeling connected to their lower belly or the lower belly pooch, but the pelvic floor contracts with the lower abdominals. So if you are not able to connect with your pelvic floor and train your pelvic floor muscles, you're not going to have more difficulty connecting to your lower abdominals, which is going to make all your core exercises really ineffective because you're not training your core. You're only connecting to parts of it. Okay. And you if you talk th about... Sorry. Breathing. No, you carry on. We're almost out of time. Briefly, okay. go on. Breathing, your pelvic floor, it mirrors your diaphragm, which is a muscle that you use to breathe. So when you inhale, your pelvic floor needs to relax because your diaphragm moves down. So that moves down too. When you exhale, your pelvic floor lifts and your diaphragm lifts. Most people don't know you only actually actively exhale and inhale is automatic. When you exhale, your muscles contract with an exhale and it forces the air out. When you inhale, they relax. So you, that's why you start with training your pelvic floor that way, lifting it with the exhale and relaxing it with the inhale. I feel like my mind has been blown several times in this interview. In Amazit, thank you for coming in. How do people get a hold of you if they want to? You can find me at the Yellow Knife Racker Club. I do personal training there. And also I run a few different classes that you can join. And you can also find me on social media, Instagram at mummy underscore fitness, Facebook at mummy fitness. Okay. Thank you for bringing in the props. Thank you for all of that. This has been Cabin Radio's Lunchtime News. I'm off to imagine shrinking and growing my penis. We are back at the same time tomorrow.